Prayer was a normal part of the daily ministry of the early church. Stephen prayed as he was being stoned in Acts chapter 7. Peter and John prayed for the Samaritans in Acts chapter 8. Saul of Tarsus, who later became the Apostle Paul, prayed after his conversion. Peter prayed before he raised Dorcas from the dead in Acts chapter 9. Cornelius prayed that God would show him how to be saved in Acts chapter 10. And Peter was on the top of a house praying when God told him how to be the answer to Cornelius' prayers. The believers in John Mark's house prayed for Peter when he was in prison. And the Lord delivered him both from prison and from death in Acts chapter 12. The church at Antioch fasted and prayed before sending out Barnabas and Paul in Acts chapter 13. It was at a prayer meeting like a Wednesday night here at Christ Community Church in Philippi that God opened Lydia's heart in Acts chapter 16. Paul prayed for his friends before leaving them in Acts chapter 20. And in the midst of a storm, Paul prayed for God's blessings in Acts chapter 27. And after the storm, he prayed that God would heal a sick man in Acts chapter 28. In almost every chapter of Acts, we will find a reference to prayer and the book makes it very clear that something happens when God's people pray. Prayer is both the thermometer and the thermostat of the local church. For the spiritual temperature either goes up or down depending on how God's people pray. And I love how John Bunyan, the author of Pilgrim's Progress says, prayer is a shield to the soul, a sacrifice to God and a scourge to Satan. In the book of Acts, we will continue to see prayer accomplish all of these things. If we wanna be a church that gets after it, we must be a church of prayer.